So what in the world do successful owner operators have in common? In today's days, it is really hard to survive as an owner operator, as a lease operator, and as a small fleet owner, but there are some common denominators between successful owner operators. I've been doing this for almost 18 years now, and I've seen a common denominator between owner operators that are successful and that make it to the finish line and owner operators that are just not so successful. And you see those guys kind of giving up their truck and buying a new truck and then again going at it and again giving up their truck. But there is things that successful owner operators do, and here's a list of them. So the first thing that they have in common is that successful owner operators work for companies that have a competitive pay package. So I'm talking about the owner operators that work for a fleet and get dispatched by them, and they are looking for the best terms out there. Here in Canada, we look for a higher rate per mile, and in the US, you're probably looking for the best commission split gross. So I see owner operators that work under 75-25 split, and I also see owner operators that work under 88-12 split. Now, successful owner operators, they're looking for the best possible package out there with the best dispatch service and the best rates possible so they can increase their chance of success. So the second thing that they all have in common is a good tax accountant. Why is this really, really important? Successful owner operators, they know that, you know, when they look at five, six years, you have some good years and you have some bad years. And yes, 2023 was a horrible year and it might be followed by another horrible year. And you need to be able to put your corporation together properly when you can carry your long losses forward, okay? So not only, I mean, it's okay to make losses, but are you gonna be able to use these losses in 2025? Can you use them? Or right now, if in 2024 is gonna look better than 2023, then you might be able to carry forward your losses for 2024, and if you're at a plus, then you're ahead of the game. Now, there's some corporations that will allow you to do that, C Corp, S Corp, and there's some that are not, but I mean, I'm not a professional, and that's why I use professionals, and if I need to, you know, I highly recommend M7 Taxes. They're both in Canada and in the US. They have 13 or 14 offices. They specialize only in trucking companies, and I highly recommend for you to use them to do your taxes. Now, another thing is the way that you're buying your truck. I mean, are you buying your truck on the corporation? Are you funding your corporation and doing a shareholder advance, and then you can milk out all that money tax-free? There's a lot of things that you can do that is legal within the tax codes that you really need to be taking advantage of. Now, these tough years, years is when you need to use them the most and understand these tax advantages. Uh, and that's why you should have a good tax accountant because you can make all the money in the world, but if you don't have the right people behind you, that money is going to be going in the air. And if you have the right people behind you, well, you'll get to keep as much of that as possible in your pockets. Now, aside from having a fuel efficient truck, another thing that you should probably look into that's gonna save you a fortune, not just today, but it's also going to save you a fortune long term. And these battery pack or diesel APU units from Thermal King, from Carrier, um, doesn't matter where you get it from. I want you to know these things can save you uh, literally enough money for your mortgage every month. Well, it depends on the size of the house that you have. But what do I mean by that? So a truck that has an APU unit versus a truck that doesn't have an APU, and it can be a difference of almost a thousand dollars a month. Like literally you're spending five dollars per hour idling your truck, depending on where you are in the US. That's really the mathematical equation. Now when you're in your truck for 25 or 26 days or even 24 days out of the month, that really accumulates to almost a thousand dollars a month. But not only that, I mean your engine hours on your truck, the longevity of your truck, the maintenance on your truck, all these problems that trucks have with the EGR valves and the coolers and the injectors. I mean, a lot of these problems stem from these trucks working 24 seven and people not shutting down their truck. So yes, my trucks will last a lot longer or the trucks that have these battery or diesel APU units, they will last a lot longer. Now let's talk about the resale value after five, six, seven years. I mean, my trucks will probably have about 4,000 hours on them and trucks in the market that idle all the time, they probably after six years, they probably have almost double the amount of hours they would have if you're idling your truck versus if you're not idling your truck. So you as a buyer, what would you prefer? You know, a same year truck, one truck that has 5,000 hours versus one truck that has 3,000 hours. I can assure you, you're gonna buy the one with the 3,000 hours. Now, I know this is not the greatest time to be buying truck, but one of the things that successful owner operators have in common is the interest rate and where they finance their trucks. Now, I know I say this a lot in my videos, but if you're going to buy a truck from a dealership and you're going to use their recommended finance company that they all recommend, I want you to know that the money-making machine in every single dealership is that finance room. They make more money than the entire dealership combined. 
Why is that? Because interest rates are high. And these recommended finance companies within a dealership, I can assure you that you'll be able to find much more competitive rates out there in the market. And that's why I've created this link out there for you guys, that if you do need financing, fill out this form, and this form will directly go to seven, eight different um, financial institutes and brokers, and they will find you the most competitive rates out there. The least you can do is compare your rates with this link. So if you are getting a rate for financing for your truck, make sure you're using this link also just to compare, okay? And make sure that somebody's not stiffing you with 10, 12, 14, 18% interest rate when you should be paying a lot less. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the ones that are looking for a fuel efficient truck. If you're looking to get into the industry, if you're looking, if you're an owner operator looking to have the flashy chrome and the flat nose trucks, and, and if you want everybody to you know move their heads or to rotate heads when you're driving into the truck stop, well, that's something that they don't have in common, okay? Most successful owner operators are looking for a fuel efficient truck, and that truck is their means to make money and to live a good, comfortable lifestyle, whether it's for themselves, for their kids, but the ones that have a good fuel efficient truck are usually the ones that are successful. And the ones that are really, really struggling right now, a lot of them, you know, when I look into their analytics and I have their consultations with them and I look at their analytics and their fuel consumption, when I see the trucks at 6.2, 6.2, I mean, guys, we're not living in 2005 anymore. It's 2024, your trucks should be getting at least 8.5 miles per gallon. And if you don't believe me, I mean, I'd love for you to come see me and my analytics. You know what, even better, why don't I show you? Here's my analytics, okay, of some of my trucks. And you can see that they're all over eight miles per gallon. Now, if you look at these fuel efficient trucks versus trucks that are not fuel efficient, the difference of two miles per gallon can equate to about $2,000 per month. Yeah, that's $2,000 per month on both drivers. One of them driving a fuel efficient truck and the second driver driving a not fuel efficient truck, meaning a flat nose truck or, you know, maybe one of those older models that are just not fuel efficient. So you are literally throwing $2,000 every single month away to the garbage. Now your counter attack to that is like, who cares? I don't have a payment anymore. You could still not have a payment and get yourself a fuel efficient truck. So hopefully you learned something from this video. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, -E and I'll catch you in my next video.